a copy of the 2002 edition of the National Routing Guide. The National Routing Guide is a document, the definitive resource on the validity of rail tickets for the purpose of rail travel in England, Wales, and Scotland. As stated by the rail regulator, it sets out passengers' rights to use the network flexibly. It is a book produced by the Rail Delivery Group, which should always be carried by any rail ticket inspector. It is also always on hand to staff at man stations. It is one of a number of technical railway manuals which exist as part of the operating of the rail network of Great Britain, many of which are now in the public domain. Customers generally encounter the document in specific circumstances, when they wish to prove the validity of their ticket on a route which might at first not appear obvious. Since most rail travelers make simple journeys, many will never encounter it. However, when making more complex journeys, it is important to stay on route. The guide defines what this means. Individual tickets may restrict holders to a subset of the acceptable routes, usually by requiring them to travel through a particular station. Ticketing arrangements on the UK's railways are notoriously arcane, but you can use the rules to get cheaper fares. The routing guide makes possible some of the recently publicized ticketing anomalies in the UK rail network such as saving money by purchasing tickets for long journeys as several discrete journeys instead. For example, as such it is a powerful tool in the arsenal of the knowing consumer, given the current complexity of ticket choice on the UK rail network. It is also important for travelers who contemplate a different route when faced with disruption. Under these circumstances staff may stamp or sign a ticket as valid via a different route. When it was introduced, its primary aim was to provide passengers with certainty about what travel their ticket buys them, after many years of ambiguity over reasonable journeys. Therefore passengers are now quite within their rights to use it as a point of reference, since it has been written and approved by the transport companies. The primary concern of those traveling is staying on a route acceptable for the ticket they have purchased. The customer is always en route if they can answer yes to at least one of the below, according to section A of the guide. The full routing guide is consulted only upon answering no to both questions. This can occur when the customer wishes or needs to change train several times, either with a view to traveling on a particular line, or because of a desire to break a journey at a given station not directly on the expected route. Doubling back passing through the same station twice is almost always forbidden, except where a rule or easement allows it. Easements These easements are exceptions to the acceptable routes which are otherwise explicitly defined, and are listed in section E of the guide for easy reference. They are simple to understand one-line rules, and exist to ensure that in most circumstances the simplest journey is acceptable. For example, the no doubling back rule normally requires travelers changing from one line to another to change at the junction station. However, such stations are often small and poorly served, so local easements often exist to allow travel to the nearest major station. In many cases this enables the traveler to remain on fast services. Easement 700,221, customers traveling from, to or via Truro to St. Ives, may double back between St. Earth and Penzance. This easement applies in both directions. Others are matters of convenience, easement 020003, passengers. Faravimore and Carbridge are permitted to alight from the sleeper at Inverness and double back to their destination in the morning. Some easements are negative, forbidding a route that might otherwise be acceptable. The relevant section of the guide which is currently available at the Rail Delivery Group website details more than 500 different easements. Train operating companies may make special arrangements for disabled passengers, who have further exemptions on an individual case basis. This allows for different routes in certain situations, such as where normal practice is to walk between two nearby stations on different lines to catch a connecting train, which wheelchair users might find difficult. There are however no clear stated rules for defining what is reasonable for disabled people, this is presumably a matter of discretion. Some journeys must involve walks of up to 10 minutes in some cases between stations to make a connection to Farnborough North. Ashvale to North Camp, three types of routes are acceptable, direct trains, shortest route, or mapped routes. The first two are simple and outlined above. Almost the whole of the routing guide is taken up with specifying the third for the entire country. Principal journeys the rules can be summarized thus, the guide allows many journeys which one might not expect. Traveling from Cardiff to Cambridge via Swansea, Shrewsbury, and Birmingham is acceptable, for instance, rather than simply via London. Generally there are a large number of permitted routes which are rarely used because they are inconvenient, but which are nevertheless legitimate. Some travelers have reported being charged extra for special routes, however, 
Official Resources, Discussing, Resource. Thanks for watching.